Welcome back to the downsize of different intermittent fasting regimens. And today we're going to look at the warrior diet, the one that I actually use. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. So the warrior diet has its pros and cons as all of the intermittent fasting protocols as any diet has. Uh, so this is once again, not a bashing video on the warrior diet, but simply expressing the cons that come with the pros. Number one, the fact that it's not clearly understood or defined. This up in the air kind of feeling or sensation when it comes to uh, the warrior diet does put it in a very odd position. People don't know if they should be grazing throughout the day with fruits and vegetables or if they should just be fasting altogether. A lot of people don't know exactly what the times are for the warrior diet, giving the warrior diet a very ambiguous feel to it. It's easy to understand what the 16-8 diet is. It's 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating. It's easy to know what the OMAD diet is, one meal a day. It's easy to know what alternate day fasting is. You fast on alternate days. But the warrior diet always ends up being one of the more difficult to understand, and it is simply because it branched out into two different paths. One being its original form, where you do eat, fruits and vegetables throughout the day when you should be fasting as opposed to eating you graze on fruits and vegetables but you still fast for about 20 hours on full-blown meals or high calorie meals so you eat very very low calories throughout the day for 20 hours and you eat your high calorie meals within a four hour window then there's the other path where it's literally fasting for 20 hours and just eating for four hours. That confusion lets people not really grasp the full breadth of what they need to do when searching on the warrior diet. And that confusion actually tends to be a downfall for people wanting to be successful with the regimen. Now let's go ahead and move on to number two. It's very hard to get into because of the fact that it is intraday, which means it is within the day. It's hard to do because it seems feasible until you actually try it. Once you try it, you start to understand how much of a task this is. If you are not used to fasting, the warrior diet is not friendly to you. You're going to feel very, very hungry throughout the day until your body gets used to it, which takes roughly about two weeks. But because of how strenuous that beginning period can become with the warrior diet, it is highly recommended that it is not the entry intermittent fasting regimen that you use. I would recommend something like the 16-8 if you're starting out. Trust me, the fact that it is within the day and has an allotted time of about four hours of eating can really, really trick you to think that it is simple to do. Once you get in there, you'll see how strenuous it can be, especially for those who haven't done intermittent fasting before. You can start off with the warrior diet, but just a fair warning, I don't want you to start off with something that you give up very quickly. Let's go ahead and move on to number three. The intraday short time span can actually make you binge eat out of fear of being hungry. Now, because you only have four hours and because it's only within that day, those four hours, you may decide to eat as much as you can, to pack in as much as you can, and you end up doing what's called binge eating to try to pack in that food. You start eating and you don't stop until your clock is over. You keep on going for those four hours as much as you can. Now. Some people don't do this, especially if they mitigate this through work or activities that they have. But if you're just at home and your four hours start, some people may go on a binge simply because of the fear of being hungry. This is why it's not good to use the warrior diet as an entry diet for intermittent fasting. I prefer you use the 16-8 because you're much more relaxed because you have so much time. And number four, on the flip side of that, under eating is very likely due to only having 
a four hour eating window. So on the flip side, if you're trying to be ultra conscious of overeating, you're going to ensure that you don't binge eat. But are you going to ensure that you get enough calories for the day and nutrition? Because I feel that most people, when they're trying to reach a goal, what they do is they only pay attention to overeating, but they don't really pay attention to undereating. And things like one meal a day and even the warrior diet with its four hour eating window can lend to having an under eating situation. Something that is not going to be helpful for you as your body is one going to adapt the metabolic adaptation is going to happen much faster and it's going to be much more difficult for you to lose weight you're also going to be lacking nutrition and all of those things do not help for example in muscle retention which muscle retention or muscle building is one of the primary drivers for your metabolic rate and you want to counteract the metabolic adaptation or adaptive thermogenesis that will be taking place when you're losing weight and especially if you're under eating as it accelerates please be conscious of this because the warrior diet is one of those things that can be in this ugly middle it's not so short as to be one meal a day but it's also really not long at all with only four hours. These are the downsides to the warrior diet intermittent fasting. Hopefully this video has helped you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.